In this video, we will discuss protecting against improper access controls. The topics will include proper storage of passwords, password controls, creating new and resetting old passwords, and PHP hashing and encryption extensions. The primary word of advice is do not store passwords as plain text. This leaves you several alternatives. Let's turn quickly to the PHP reference guide where we will examine cryptography extensions. Several of these extensions are useful for our purposes. First of all, we have hash. What this does is it takes a string and produces what's called an MD5 hash. A hash is considered one way. The reason why this is useful for passwords is that there's no reason why we need to actually know the user's password. We simply need to be able to hash the password and then compare it with another hashed password later on. There's a similar extension called mcrypt. mcrypt is older than hash. It doesn't have as much support for algorithms, however, it is part of the core. Hash, on the other hand, is now considered a standard extension and should be available in the majority of PHP installations. We also have password hashing, which is very new and will potentially take the place of hash. There's also a couple others, such as mhash and OpenSSL, which will not be considered in this lesson. Finally, there's a library called Crack, which is used for testing the strength of passwords. In this example, protect access storage md5.php, we are looking at how to use the md5 function. As you can see, it's quite simple. You simply say md5 and give it the password. This will then produce an md5 hash of the password. The problem with md5, however, is that it's an older technology and although it's very fast and easy to use, it's not as secure as once thought, and it will at most slow down the attackers. Another possibility is to use hash. Hash is much more secure. Hash allows you to use different algorithms. As an example here, we're using the ripe MD256 algorithm to hash the password. This will produce an 80-byte hash, which at this point in time is considered quite secure. The end result will then look something like this. As you can see, in this example, we have the username, followed by a colon, followed by the actual hash. Let's now go to the demo web page and have a look at how password hashes can be used as part of the login process. In this example, we've got a file, protect access password login.php. At the very bottom of the screen, you can see the list of current users. We'll start by entering a bad username and password combination. When we now go to log in, the login attempt will be unsuccessful. If we have a quick look at the code, you'll notice that what we do is we capture, in this case, the email as the username, properly filtered using filter var. We then capture the password. We convert it to a hash using the hash function. We can then compare the existing password, which is stored in a hashed format, with the incoming password, which we've converted into a hash. If the two password hashes match, then we know that the login is successful. We will now log in as a valid user. You'll notice that the login attempt was successful. Let's now look at password controls when establishing a new user account. In this example, we will log in as a new user. This takes us to a new program, protect access password set.php. This is where our password controls come into play. You'll notice that we've established rules. Passwords must be, in this example, a mix of upper and lowercase letters, at least one number and one special character, also between 4 and 16 characters in length. If the password fails the test, you should display the appropriate error messages so that your new users know what exactly to type. Let's try this again, but with a password which is considered acceptable, the last example on the page. You'll also notice that we ask a security question. We also ask that they supply an answer to the security question. This will be used later in the process of resetting the password. We click Confirm. At this point, what normally happens is a confirmation code is generated, which is also stored in the user file. Normally, the confirmation code would be transmitted through an offline method, such as an email or an SMS text message. In this example, we'll simply copy the confirm code. We'll move on to the logic which implements the confirmation. So we click on the link which is generated for us, and we are now looking at protect access password confirm.php. 
you'll notice that the user status contains the confirmed code. A valid user would have a status of 1. You will also notice that as part of password controls, we are asking them to re-enter their original new username and password. The confirmation code is one that we supply. The reason for this is that if the attacker gains access to the confirmation code, they will still be unaware of the original username and password. We can now go ahead and click on Confirm, and the status has now been updated to 1. The security question and answer are recorded, along with the new username and the hashed password. Let's take a quick look at the code which generated these few pages. We are now looking at protect access password set.php. First of all, of course, we initialize variables. We then capture the email which is serving as the username. You'll notice that we strip out any extraneous information from the question and answer aside from alphanumeric and spaces. We then capture the password, but because we are setting the password, we do not establish a hash at this point. What we need to do then is test to see if the confirmation button was pressed and see if the password and its confirmation match. If so, we go through a validation process. Let's have a look at this, which is stored in the model. The validation process goes through the series of rules that we've established. First of all, we use Sterling to check the minimum and maximum password lengths. We then use pregmatch to test to see if it contains an uppercase, a lowercase, a number, and a non-alphanumeric character. Moving back to the access password set.php file, once the password is passed to validation, we make sure there are no error messages. At this point, we're able to hash the password and store the password in the file. In the confirmation process, assuming the user has received a confirmation code through an offline message, they will be sent to this routine independently. Again, we capture the original email and password from the user. We take the confirmation code from the current code which was set through the URL. We then test to see if the passwords match. In this case, they're both hashed. We then test to see if the confirmation code matches the code which is stored in the file. If everything works out properly, the match is successful. We then reset the status code to 1 and then save the information. Let's now look at the reset process. Let's say in this case that our new user has forgotten their password. We enter the email address and click on Forgot Password. This takes us to another file, protect access password reset.php. This is a combination of some of the previous code examples. We have the same criterion for establishing the password, just as if we are establishing a new password. However, you'll notice the difference. We are now asking the security question here. This is to provide additional confirmation. If the user knows the answer to the security question, then the password is reset. If they do not answer correctly, then the reset process does not take place. So first of all, we'll enter in a wrong answer. You'll notice that the password reset did not take place. Now let's do the same thing, but enter the correct answer. We click on confirm. The code does a lookup, and we have now successfully reset the password and of course rehashed the password. Let's now look at this code file. The logic is quite similar to the other files that we just examined. We capture the email. We capture the answer, stripping out any characters which are non-alphanumeric or not spaces. Again, we capture the passwords in their raw form because, if successful, we want to hash them and store them in a hashed format. Again, we check the email. We also retrieve the question and answer. If this is the first time through, we give them the question. If it's the second time through, we check and make sure that the answer that's stored matches the answer that was supplied. Again, as we're resetting the password, we must perform validation as before. If validation is successful, we then set the match to true, rehash the password, and save the information. So in review, for proper storage of passwords, do not store as plain text. Bear in mind that hashing is one way, whereas encryption is two way. If you need to retrieve the password, for example, in the case of a database user, you would want to use encryption and not hashing. Otherwise, there's no need to know website user passwords. In terms of password control, one thing to be aware of is the length of time that the users are allowed to retain their password. 
This is referred to as password aging. You can also establish rules regarding the length and mixture of characters. Be careful, however, to not annoy your website users with too many restrictions. For controls with regards to new and resetting old passwords, you should have some sort of offline confirmation code. You should also incorporate security questions which can be asked if the user, for example, has forgotten their password and needs to reset it. PHP has a number of hashing and encryption extensions. These include password hashing, which is a new wrapper for the crypt function, hash, which is enabled by default and requires no external libraries. Hash replaces an older extension, mhash. mcrypt has been available for quite some time. It has a wide variety of algorithms, but it's not quite as flexible as hash. Crack is used to test the password strength. OpenSSL is used for managing an SSL connection.